What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to adjust the rear shock absorber preload on this 2007 Yamaha FZ6. This bike comes equipped with a pretty simple rear shock absorber which only has preload adjustment. The tool you're going to need actually comes with the bike in the factory tool kit. It's a claw hook shaped looking thing. We access the preload adjustment by taking off the seat, taking off this little side panel here, and then accessing it through the frame. Before we dive into it, I want to clear a myth about preload adjustment. Adjusting preload does not affect the stiffness of a shock. Instead, it changes the amount of energy required to fully compress the spring. The amount of preload you need in your shock is dependent on how much you weigh along with the cargo and if you're carrying any passengers. So the amount of preload you'll need will vary depending on what you attach to the bike or how much you weigh. If you add a passenger, it's good to increase the preload so the bike is still stable under that added weight. After this video, you'll feel confident adjusting your preload because it's a far simpler process than you might think. With that cleared up, let's get into it. Pop the seat off and remove the side plastic with a 5mm Allen head bolt. The preload adjust tools will be found in your factory toolkit. You can see through the side of the bike here we have some notches with an increasing height and numbers. One is the lowest and softest measurement you can have for preload and seven is the hardest. Right now it's set to five. Okay, to get in there and adjust it we use the hook shaped thing with the long extension. We're gonna wrap it around and you can just push it left or right, whichever direction you need to go. It does take a firm push, like I'm going up to six. You kind of got to, it's tough because you're pushing it up a notch and up a slope going up the numbers, but it should be easier going down the slope. Let's try it now. Nope, about just as hard. Just a note, the bike is on the center stand right now, so there's nothing trying to compress the shock. That would be fighting you and making it more difficult. But wait, how much preload do you need on your bike? I'm gonna show you. This bike has 5.1 inches of suspension travel in the back or 130 millimeters, and we're gonna look at that now. To measure the preload, you're gonna need the rider on the bike with the bike vertical, not in the center stand, but possibly leaning against a wall so it's free to move up and down through the suspension travel. Let's do that now. To start measuring sag, we need the bike suspension fully extended. So I've got the bike on the center stand here and we're gonna measure from the top of the nut here to a mark I've made on the frame. You want your mark to be about vertical above the center line of the wheel. So I'll measure it now. It measures 23 inches and 3 eighths. Now we'll have the rider sit on the bike leaning against the wall to do our next two measurements. Now, with our rider on the bike, that isn't me, but this is just for demonstration purposes, we have to take two measurements. One after compressing the bike and gently letting it settle. One after lifting up the tail of the bike and gently letting it settle. These two measurements we will average to determine how much stiction is happening on the rear shock absorber. So first measurement, just push down, let it come up gently and measure. We've got 22 inches on the dot. Next we're gonna lift it and let it settle gently. Measure again. We got 22 and an eighth. With those two measurements, we'll average them, which is 22 and a 16th, and use that to calculate our sag. So ideally, your sag amount is between 25 and 30% of the full shock stroke of 5.1 inches. So after your measurements, you'll adjust your preload accordingly to either to add sag or to reduce sag. In our case, the sag is all right. The FZ6 has 5.1 inches of rear shock travel or 130 millimeters. When we measured the rear suspension uncompressed in the center stand, it had 23.375 inches to our mark. Then when we compressed the suspension and let it settle gently, it measured 22 inches. Then when we lifted the suspension and let it settle, it measured 22.125 inches. Those two measurements averaged out to negate the shock stiction. We measured 22.0625 inches. Therefore, we have 1.3125 inches of sag or 25.7% of total sag of the rear shock. Our sag percentage is derived from the 1.3125 total sag over the 5.1 inches of total suspension travel, which equals 0.257. Therefore, the preload is all right for the rider. Sag is an important characteristic of the bike because it determines where the center of gravity is in the corners. If you don't have the appropriate amount of sag and you just have too little, the bike's center of gravity will sit a little bit taller through the corners, which means your head angle will be just a little bit steeper because the center of the bike will be up a little higher, angling the fork forward and down a little bit more. 
Vice versa, if you have too much sag and you're sitting too low to the ground, it's more possible to scrape peg, but it's also that you'll have more rake and the front end of the bike will be sticking out more, it'll want to wander at lower speeds. So nailing your sag is a crucial part of adjusting your rear suspension, and really it's the only adjustment you have on a Yamaha FZ6. So thanks for watching, please smash the like and subscribe button down below if this helped you out, and as always, have a good day.